have an evil sense of humor, don't I? Evil. Ego's evil. Can't have a sense of humor like that. Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. We're joined now with Chris Harris, and I want to read the very first report. And I'm not, I'm not going to steal your thunder because I know you have tons of stories. But we've been getting an E and E news two weeks in a row now, and of course the latest is a report quoting you, Mr. Chris Harris, former licensed senior reactor operator and engineer, June nineteenth, three thirty-five p.m. Uh, I do believe that part uh, about it being a hydrogen explosion at WIP due to decomposition of the green kitty litter that causes a whole bunch of problems and one of them is that this is a huge dirty bomb and I need to very immediately and scientifically and technically correct that. Uh, this wasn't what your intention was because a hydrogen explosion doesn't create just exploding nuclear waste like plutonium and americium. It literally creates a nuclear explosion which is plutonium then becomes detonated to create a nuclear flash of neutrons, a neutron flux and a small nuclear explosion. It's like years ago, I listened to a report where a scientist was in a Los Alamos uh, reactor area, he was playing around with a ball, literally with a, with a large ball of radioactive plutonium. And he thought it was a smart idea to take a typical regular ha hardware store hammer and to tap, tap the uh, plutonium. And all of a sudden, with his little glasses on, he had these glasses on to protect his eyes, he saw a big flash. That flashes what's called a neutron flux. And within 48 hours, his bone marrow crashed. He was succumbed with massive infections in every corner of his body, and he immediately collapsed and died. Now, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about just a dirty bomb. We're talking about a hydrogen-generated nuclear explosion. And these are going to continue to pop underground and above ground because they have hydrogen being generated by the plutonium, uh, by, the, the hydro, uh, by the zirconium cladding on the fuel rod assembly bundles that generates hyd uh, tritium, uh, deuterium, and hydrogen, which will create, create hydrogen explosions. And that explosion will push the uh, critical mass together to create small, and or not so small, nuclear explosions. This is not just a dirty bomb. So, Chris, I'd like you to clarify that. Maybe they can get this on their E&E News. So they need to know these are much bigger and much nastier than just a hydrogen explosion that's going to blow some nuclear waste around. This also will turn into much of this material to what's called a nanoparticle vapor, which means it's going to be injected into the troposphere and spread around the planet, not just locally at the WIP reactor. It's going to go downwind and eventually get injected into the high atmosphere around the entire planet. Oh, oh Dr. Bill, I mean, it's... Uh, actually, I, I thank E&E News for picking up that, even though it is kind of weird to see what you... We they we, we, want to, we just want to clarify. They're doing their best job, but we want to clarify this because yeah. we need to clarify these issues, no, I, I especially when you get large amounts of nuclear material like around not only there but Hanford. You don't just have a little americium, a little plutonium, or around the uh, Rocky Flats facility where I took care of employees working there doing work for NOVA doing testing. And we found after they did their sampling of water, etc., it was 10,000 to 1 million plus times more radioactive than they thought. And they realized after they had done their water ground and air sampling that they should have been walking around in radiation hazmat suits and they had a chain link fence with people literally hiking around the area where the deer were playing and people were kind of just gaily walking around trying to get fresh air sunshine and their little dose of local plutonium we in the industry call that fence a HEPA fence instead of like you know the HEPA filter that actually removes mm -hmm. uh, a high energy uh, or high efficiency mm -hmm. filter that removes particulates. Mm -hmm. All they right. have around there is a HEPA chain link fence, which obviously doesn't uh, do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, HEPA uh, fence. Yeah, you know, well, that's pretty funny. Yeah, HEPA fence. Think, <laughs> yeah, we, that's what we call it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so there's nothing between nothing between the plutonium and us, but a HEPA fence. Yeah. Oh, there's know. one other thing. There's one other thing. The, the the false sense of security and imagination that the government really does care for them. As I've said many times, they care for them to death. Well, yeah. They no, love them to death. The fence there. Uh, the, the, of course they care for us. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd get a little enraged. Uh, I can't, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to be quiet. I just can't. I, you, you, you can't know, be I, quiet when you hear that kind of stuff. So let, let's talk about that. Now we got the whip reactor. This is like so bizarre. It's, it literally, I don't know. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel needs to pick this up and make some jokes about it. Jimmy Kimmel, okay? 
on his late night TV show because I'm sure he can make some green kidney litter jokes that are going to go on for weeks. He can continue poking at this every show and people are going to continually get entertained and laugh their heads off and eventually they're going to say, oh, why does he keep on poking at this? Maybe, maybe we should research. Oh my God, it's real. They actually changed the green kitty litter and these are bombs. And all these radioactive sites like our old nuclear weapon sites where we actually turn to green kitty litter to make actually hydrogen and critical nuclear explosion bombs. Ooh, is that bad for us or good? Mm, let's see now, there's a yes, no question, not multiple choice. There's a yes or no answer, that's correct. Damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, so Chris, tell us what you know. Really, it, it's in right. Hanford. God knows how many other sites. The Department of Energy, under the the Abominator and his bunch of Yahoo idiots uh, that run this government, basically, we don't really have a federal government. We got a proxy globalist government. They're too busy just trying to do evil, stupid stuff that they can't manage the government worse than they possibly could. They actually have the anti Midas touch. It turns to fecal matter. Everything they touch. Nuclear reactors, no. Old kitty litter is no good. Let's go green. Green sounds good. Let's go to well, green kitty litter. Absolutely. Turn them into bombs. Well, we did discuss, you know, that there is a wide array of uh, criticality events. Mm. And, and really, I guess what, what they picked up on was, you know, I guess a, a lesser event would be just a mild case. It would be just a really bad, dirty bomb. And then, of course, as you discussed, you know, depending upon what's in the containers themselves, this right. vile material and all could be compressed, then you could actually get a more severe criticality. I'm not going to say prompt critical because uh, it all depends on... Well, we don't know. Every, every bomb is going to be different. Well, we One would be a right. small... Sway. Exactly. But the point is there's a potential for a critical reaction and a nuclear flux. Now, what's happening, and the best way to tell that this is really going on, is to actually fly over or put a drone over the Fukushima site or even look for miles away if you're in a commercial airliner and just look out your window. And if you see little blue streaks, that's the neutron flux, literally frying little nitrogen atoms in the atmosphere, especially at sundown or as soon as it turns dark, and you're going to see blue streaks like a laser light show at a rock band concert. Those little blue streaks are neutron fluxes coming from the ground or below the ground because a critical reaction's occurred and nuclear material saying, hello, neutrons, let's do a little dance called uh, chain reaction. It's like a do-si-do -si -do, uh, Texas dance, you know, like the de Texas two-step. Only when you release more neutrons, you get a big flux beam, and it shoots up through the air and fries neutrons 30, 40, 50, 60 miles into the air until you, there's no more air. And then when the nitrogen atoms are so far apart you can't see it, those nitrogen atoms are telling you there's been a neutron flux shooting into the atmosphere at all angles. So that means we're having critical reactions underground at Fukushima. So if anybody wants to just kind of say, hey, uh, pilots, if you're flying near Fukushima 100 miles away, did you ever see any blue streaks in the sky? And if they do, they'll say, hey, yeah, I saw some blue streaks. It looked kind of weird. Uh, and it's because there's neutron fluxes shooting neutrons through nitrogen at night making a blue line. I was just wondering, do you, do you suppose there are astronauts or uh, uh, astronomers on other planets looking at Earth saying, wow, look at that, there's another flash of, of blue light again. I wonder what they're doing down there. Yeah, exactly. No, Whoa, actually, our, doing to uh, our space station can see it. Our space, if, we have, if we have space state, if we have what's called these high-resolution imaging satellites like the Google satellite, I don't know if people can look down with Google. If you can look at Google Earth and you can look at Fukushima or even near the adjacent area, you should be able to look at Google Earth, especially at night, and be able to see blue streaks. I'm asking people out there, if you can find it, send me the links. Send me the pictures. But I'll guarantee you, if you actually look down with Google Earth at night, you should see blue streaks coming out of Fukushima. Interesting, hey? Well, you, here's say, the, the scary part. If, if you're seeing blue streaks, that means that your optic nerve is picking that up. In other words, it's going into your brain. Well, not if you're seeing an image on a computer screen. It's only if you're actually up in the well, sky. Yeah, if you're there. If you're, if you're flying there, in a bad. plane, for instance. I did an, an analogy uh, last week on the, uh, for the last half hour about a 12-year-old boy I was trying to help that they'd moved back to Fukushima that was basically very ill, couldn't grow, etc. And uh, that immense, you'd be your stomach will first.
headlines that I posted up uh, today so you can have a look at it. Fukushima radiation causing Japan bird deformities. Radiation pouring into the sea from layers 80 feet down. Radioactive water now 80 feet underground at Fukushima. TEPCO begins decon of R3 first floor robots. Uh, birth defects in West Coast states hit record. You've got a bunch of headlines too, uh, Chris. I want you to go through yours because these are very shocking. Uh, they're well researched and uh, they're real. And uh, you know, if the people want to know about them, they need to start getting informed. This uh, uh, gentleman, his name is Sonny, came from Doctors Data, came over to my place to help me with uh, David Crane set up our radiation site. Turned out he was on the um, Ronald Reagan between 2007 and 2009. Uh, he said, I'm not worried about the radiation when I told him about the rad gamma detection site. I said, really? I said, well, the Ronald Reagan got blasted with three plumes of radiation. Now the ship, they're thinking about sinking it after trying to decon it and spending many millions of dollars to try to decontaminate it and replace the equipment, strip it air all away from all of its electronic controls to its pipes and air tube systems and everything. And I said, now they've realized they can't decontaminate it, so they're going to sink it. And much of the crew has already died or is in the process of dying from radiation poisoning. By the way, if you're out there, I will provide you free consultations to help you decon and to rescue your tissues and get your stem cells going. Most of these people should have a bone marrow uh, stored in a bone marrow bank while they still have some immune system left in case they need to do a bone marrow transplant. They should also have their bone marrows of their relatives typed in case they need an emergency bone marrow transplant. Uh, I can give them all the proper medical things that we need to be done as well as the rescue of nutraceuticals and uh, the uh, technologies to help stimulate their body to try to heal from this damage. But the fact is that uh, after I told him this, he kind of a little freaked out a little bit and realized, like, this is not fine. Uh, we're generating real data. If there's a surge in cesium-137, because we're only looking at gamma, you need to be aware the government's not going to tell you we are. And we're not going to try to fiddle data. We're not conspiracy theorists. We're not here as fear-mongering to try to create something out of nothing. If it doesn't surge, it doesn't surge. But if it continues to trend upward over the next few years, that's bad. Because it's going to bioaccumulate, not just in our little detector, but in your bodies. And it'll be in your food, in your meat especially, because it's higher end in the food chain, which is one of the reasons why I stopped eating meat. And I eat only fish now from the Atlantic Ocean, not Pacific. And not filter feeders like scallops or mussels. People need to be aware we're in deep doo-doo, and this is not a joke. This is not a joke, and this is not to be played with or pretended or, or <laughs> I know more. When I said I was a nuclear di division with the American College of Occupational Environmental Medicine, I took care of plants in Savannah River, plutonium detonators, a reactor source of Chicago, and Rocky Flats. It shut him up real quick. He realized I was not a novice with a background in nuclear toxicology and physics. He realized that he was talking to someone who was not going to just kind of be blown off by a kind of... A, uh, kind of a, you know, I call an ad hominem statement of, oh, I'm not worried. Well, you don't need to be worried right now. You need to be aware. How about, don't worry, become aware. How's that? So, Chris, let's go through your list. Do you have a good long list of news items I want you to go through here? you got a bunch of them. Well, well first of all, I just wanted to thank you for offering such good help to our sailors. And uh, that's, that's great. Also, I guess the Alps system is finally back in service. Again, the ALPS, the Advanced Liquid Process System at Fukushima, that is now capable of scrubbing after three and a half years, wow. scrubbing uh, strontium good. out. But, uh, you know, Great news. Since, well, it's good news, except the one thing is I really challenge the reliability of that system and how, how long will it run for. Well, they need, to, they need to have redundancy, backups, and alternative ways. And the NDL show problem solve, like a NASA mission, the problem places where the system will break down in the near or far future. And they need to start problem solving those before they happen. That's how you run a system so you've got backups, problem solving, redundancy, etc. so that when this things happen, that's why I tell people most things that happen bad are not accidents, they're on purposes. Whether there's someone who doesn't exercise and eats garbage, or someone who runs a nuclear plant and has a water line for the high water line above the water intake for the diesel fuel generators, or they have seismic activity and they don't go and retest the welds and the structural integrity of the reactor, or check to see how thick the pipes are after they've been scrubbing them out for 20 years, and they're now down to a tissue paper thin, which they discovered in Chicago at one of the big plants up there a few years ago. This is just what they call stupid on steroids. And uh, if they actually problem solve these things, 
worked it out with redundancies, we wouldn't have these disasters because these people are just plain lazy. So let's go on. We've got uh, uh, we've got uh, TEPCO decommissioning of the plant, uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. What do you mean talking about decommissioning? How can they decommission a plant that is they don't even have control of? What what's going on there? Yeah, well, got two 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 thirds of the fuel rod assemblies are pulled out, but the, that's the easy yeah. stuff. The hard work starts next, and uh, the fuel rod, fuel assembly number four is not even the common pool. Or the real problems with reactor one, two, and three, where they can't even get a robot in the order to fry it. Uh, you know. That is correct. They cannot. They cannot even get a robot in there. And I actually, I sent you some uh, information on the types of robots that they're going to attempt to use for decontamination efforts, so that they can one day uh, come closer to getting people in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, decontamination and shield shielding. Yeah, but, but, but if, uh, if, if you use guys, a, let me inter- and let me ask a question here. Uh, yeah, it may sound stupid, but are you telling me that they can't take a robot and put all kind of lead shielding on it and use it? It's that bad. It, lead's not enough. You need to put depleted uranium shielding to shield the gamma, which will fry the integrated chips and neutron flux. The neutron flux changes the crystal structure of the of the silicon wafer. The only chips that work are ferromagnetic, which they don't want to tell you about from Atmel Corporation because they're classified. They're tri triple prime ferromagnetic chips. They're better than the tube chip, tubes that the Russians use for their Tupolev long range jets and their other aircraft that are we call EMP resistant. Uh, but they're also neutron flux uh, and, uh, and, neut- and neutron flux as well as electromagnetic pulse uh, and gamma resistant. So. That's the problem. What they should be doing is putting cabled robots that are using fiber optics. They could go in there. If they use small robots, they could start moving the debris around. I don't think they need should be extracting anything. They need to do two things. Their enemies are neutrons and water. So they need to put a starlight, and I'm putting this in my report, which will be ready here very shortly and ready to go to everybody. I sent a, a rough draft of it in the last newsletter last weekend, and it, unfortunately the pictures didn't come through. But you'll see an expanded version of that with all the references and all our emails back and forth for three and a half years in the DVD, which I'm hoping will be ready before the 4th of July. Because we as Americans, and as we've already heard this story, we're going to actually get a tab from the Japanese and TEPCO uh, for the destruction of this plant for fixing it up because we're in the tailpipe of this mess. And they're going to hand it over to America and say, yeah, it's your mess now. You've got to clean up America. It turns out virtually all the contractors that are working under the umbrella of TEPCO are American contractors, including the company that set up the kitty litter mess uh, and the WIP reactor. The same idiots were involved as one of the contractors for TEPCO. Crazy. So, uh, Chris, uh, some more news. You mentioned uh, Kyushu Electric submits documents for reactor safety checks. You've got a report here, uh, recent topics, robots usher in yeah, new if phase of cleanup. And if you look, yeah, and if you look at the one right beneath that one also, those documents are being challenged heavily by the Nuclear Regulatory Agency in Japan. In fact, the harsh criticism to the, uh, the TEPCO and the other companies that want to uh, go ahead, and I'll, I'll tell you exactly where the specifics are in the uh, seismic responses of the plant itself. There, of the, the being challenged on the adequacy of the preparations uh, for a very large earthquake, which, uh, which of course can happen. I mean, we just had we just had one in Alaska. Uh, uh, right, we had a nine point oh. And by the way, it goes yeah. clockwise around the Ring of Fire, so. They had one, I think, three or four weeks ago in Japan. It was the biggest one since March 11, 2011. Uh, and uh, we know that a big quake's coming, which means that the structure of the plant is reduced because there's subsidence, because there's neutron fluxes, which change the crystal structure of the metals and plastics of the building, so they're structurally don't have the same crystal str- we call integrity that they had in the past. We know that they, the plant has had you know, major annealing of things like the seals around the cooling pools, etc. All these issues mean, as they say in the movie, you know, with Bobby Dick, there she blows. It's going to blow one of these days. And that's why we have our gamma detectors up, because we can't rely on the idiot government. we got to do it ourselves and pay for it ourselves, because we can't rely on a government that's so corrupt, they want to put nuclear reactors with old technology and call it green, this is the idiot with Obama, and put kitty litter that turns nuclear waste into bombs. Yeah, but it was green. 
You know what? These guys would be good if they're writing scripts for SNL, Saturday Night Live, or Jimmy Kimmel, but they shouldn't be running the government.